Ernest Kaplan I code movies that I'm going to be making in a series. Uh, my experience is I work with clients very often, almost every day. Uh, I'm Roberto Kaplan and I was trained as an optometrist. My first training was in South Africa. And then I had the opportunity of being in the United States. And I did a professorship at the University of Houston and Pacific University. You see, when a patient uh, tells me that they have symptoms in the eyes, I look at the eyes as a kind of printer from the computer. The computer is actually the brain and the mind, which may not even be the same thing. So I'm looking at the eye, and I'm seeing a glimpse of the human being from the physical eye. It's a glimpse into how they perceive. When we use the Kaplan Eye Code, what we are examining are essentially four things. We are asking the question, what do the diopters tell us? What does the eyesight tell us? What do the eye conditions tell us? The second thing is we look at the iris structure, because the iris structure is a genetic map of what's actually transmitted down through the family tree. And we also look at the perceptions. This is how he speaks, how he views his condition, his perception of his eyes. Uh, the fourth thing is how the two eyes work together, or maybe even don't work together. This is a very important part of the Kaplan Eye Code. So, let's take this man for example. He had a problem. He has pain in the eye. He wears glasses. Looked at the glasses, and the first thing I noticed was there were two prescriptions from two different doctors. And what the doctor showed me was that in his view, through one direction, he was far-sighted. And because of astigmatism, through another direction, he was nearsighted. So this means that he has two visual styles for two different viewing conditions. It's kind of like a double personality. This is conflicting, especially when the two eyes have to integrate together. Next step from there was to identify, does he use the two eyes together? Does he focus through one eye and dominate? Because if you dominate through one eye, there's a possibility that there's going to be tension. And this crowding, this cramping, this tense way of perceiving can contribute to the pain. So there's a relationship from the inside. How do I come into the world? How do I view? Do I view in a contracted way? Or do I view through my eyes in an expanded way? The point is, with his glasses, his sharpness of eyesight is good through each eye and with both eyes together. But in conventional eye care, this is where the examination ends. In the Kaplan Eye Code, we are examining what's behind the eyes, what's behind the story of the diopters, the astigmatism, and so on. So let me show you a few examples now of what I actually found, how I analyzed it, how I decoded it, and uh, how this was helpful for this man. In this uh, example here, you can see that I was asking him to look at my nose in front of me and to position the thumb directly over the nose. And what he did was he positioned his thumb over the right eye. This shows a very strong preference for the right eye. And because he could see through it, this means that the left eye was participating. But the, he saw two thumbs. There's a second thumb over here. So he's looking at my nose. He believed that the thumb was over the nose. But in the actual placement was like you can see it over the right eye. So the first order of business was just training to move the thumb so it was directly over the nose. And then what he saw was he saw my nose in between the two thumbs. In this way, he's perfectly balanced and integrated. Learn more about this eye code screening using the thumb go on to the website www.lifecode.cc and under iCode there's a screening and it'll take you through the steps that I just did with this particular client. The next thing I did was I actually mapped out the astigmatism and the way we do that is we actually draw a little grid. I'll show you how that works. So we actually draw a grid for each eye. So we do a vertical and a horizontal for each eye. 
And then what I do is I map out how he actually perceives. So I notice that for him, coming down here, his perception was far-sighted of plus 1.5. And then at 90 degrees opposite that, he was minus 1.5. So you can see the two extremes. One is nearsightedness and the other is far-sightedness. And this is very conflicting. And the same for the left eye. Similar pattern. So we can then take a look at the two primary orientations. There are two primary orientations. There's this, this blue one here and this blue one over here. Oops. And this would be unclear, this meridian, because that's nearsighted in the distance. This would be far-sighted projection along this orientation here. So I actually made a little slit that he could look through. And I had him orientate in each of these directions. And he had the direct experience of how unclear his view was and how different it was between the two orientations. So now you can see there are pictures of his iris, which is the Kaplan eye curve 2. And if we take the same astigmatic perceptions that we had before and direct our lines now, superimposing the perceptual view over the iris, we can see the relationships between the genetic code from the father side of the family, which is the right eye, and the genetic connection to the female side. So we remember now that this area here, this line over here, this region, we call this a, a slit or a region of uh, perception along this orientation, is nearsighted. This region is far-sighted, coming along there, this is near-sighted. And the same over here, this is far-sighted, and this is near-sighted. So what we can do is we can analyze the different structures underneath this line. For example, this is an open petal structure. There's also a structure here of openness, and another structure here of openness. These, this is an emotional structure, you see, we're talking about. And in the far side, there is a thinking structure here. Thinking structure here. We have a thinking dominated far sighted view, and we have a emotional near sighted view. And these two views ultimately have to meet and become friends. So I worked with this client in his perceptions along each of these meridians to help him explore a new way of perceiving. First of all, he, we worked with relaxation to f make sure that there was less tension in the eyes, less pain. And as we went into the perceptual realities behind this genetic coding that we see here, he was able to relax more and more into himself. And in this way, he takes on the real perceptual code that is his not the code through the diopters that are too strong and hiding the emotional message. I trust that this example uh, shows how the Kaplan I code actually works in terms of taking the analysis of data and looking behind the eye condition, We're not actually trying to fix something in the eye, but it's using the eye information to find out what's the background reason for the person looking in a near-sighted, far-sighted way, and what's the reason for this tension? By the end of the session, which was about 55 minutes, he had made some very definite improvements. He could feel the difference between a contracted state and an open state. He could see where there's pain in his life with the certain perceptions that he has of how he works, of his family life, and his personal life. Thank you for watching.